Super parroting Million Dollar Children by 18. This is Donnie Wise. I own Donnie Wise and Associates LLC. That's the finance dynamic. We're going through a lot of changes within the next month. One thing is that we are going to decide on the book release by the 27th when we first when we first will go live on a Sunday. Um, and the final announcement on that time will be on, by this Sunday on the 20th. Uh, but there's a lot going on. Our, our top priorities right now, because of the issues going on with with my some of my associates, it, it just, they're in the midst of their own um, top projects, and we've been all working together. The book release is the top priority right now for us, and also getting the website up, a new website up, and it will be Empower the Consumer, which will be a Google News site. Um, there is a test site on there, but the other site is being created as we speak. So, Super Parity Million Dollar Children I 18 is one of the pinnacles of finance dynamic and Donnie Wise and Associates. <clears throat> We are looking to provide online media, public, that's including publishing, of uh, information that for businesses and consumers that they understand. That's relative to, to them. So it's going to be, that's going to be a different format. And one of these unique scenarios is a super parody million dollar children by 18 that, that's going to be be published in multimedia format this is an exciting event because you usually have somebody who's writing a book or this sort of material they do their research and the research has been done but they want to hear, they won't have a live experience this book will be an involving book it will be on multimedia platform it will evolve. We will have updates. And so if you buy a paperback only, you know, we, we're we going to encourage you know, a drive toward the multimedia format so you can keep up with the updates. And, and that's going to be, we're going to get as much information from the general public that we can over the next few weeks. And we want people to participate because it will be beneficial for them if you're a parent, a future parent, with children not 18 or 18, under 18, what what how this will benefit you? We'll discuss that a little bit later. Turning 18 in America, there is a mistake right here. You should be able to consider whether you want to start a business, go to college, buy a home, go to work. But children children in our schools and our school system fails, and and our society has failed because we are not. The most important subject in life it, if that if impacts you from day one of your birth until the last day on this earth is for is finance, personal finance and business finance. If you're a business owner, instead we teach our kids very little. I mean, yeah, you, the schools are trying to set some curriculum, but it's not aggressive enough. And and, and you hear these. People say will say financial literacy is irrelevant. It's not. You can't teach people that. And they. It's why would you teach about balancing a checkbook in 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 school? Well, that's where number one. That's where the critics are wrong. Being a banker for thirteen years and managing as many people as I did. And also working in markets where I work with affluent clients and non-affluent clients that I was able to help them build and teach them to be engaged in their own personal finances, to look at being a captain instead of being a crewman on their own sh- of, the, of the ship that they own, their, per- their personal or business finance. And that's where we were successful in the... In the bank, in the banks that l- let me use that type of c- uh, customer relation management, integration of new technology, oh, oh, client inter- engagement to make sure that we're having a 
an impact in the community that was financially healthy. If you're, and now look at here, this is me and my mother at my graduation, and um, she actually looks, she actually looks younger now, I think, than she did that day. But as you see, she's crying, and my grandfather's back here, he's hidden, and at that time, he was 89 years old, and he watched me graduate from um, undergraduate that day, his first male in his family to graduate, and he, at 18 in life, debt for degrees. At 18, we're telling kids, I, I was fortunate that I had zero student debt when I left college. Tuition was not as expensive, and the economy was much better, where, where families could afford to pay off everything. So, that's what, you turn 18 now, debt for degrees, because you've not, you, you have spent, your parents spent money on, if you're an 18 year old, or you're a parent, you spent money on frivolous items, that now, that when your kid turns 18, now they have to finance themselves, to get through college. No savings plans, no financial education, no way of other than debt to even consider when there's options out there. The American dream. Because we're giving our young people so much debt at 18, we're sliding the debt yoke on them. The super parenting wants to, we want the American dream back. The goal, one goal of this book is to get back to what my father and my uncle were able to do. They, you know, parents today, If when I talk about this book, well, you know, there's parents living in poverty. And this is, and this is a widespread thought in the education system. That they live in poverty and they're not able to even provide food for their family. So how are they going to do something like this? Your book is misleading. Well, a does say million dollar children by 18. And we're going to show you what it takes to get up to a million dollars in dollars. But we're also going to show you what a um, million dollars can be worth in value, too. And that's the two aspects of this book. We create debt for our young ch children now. When they turn 22, 23, they don't go to further program, uh, higher graduate or any advanced um, higher learning programs such as JD for law, uh, medicine, anything. We we have stopped the innovation. My aunt, father and uncle in the 1970s when I was a child, they, the economy was bad. The challenges were many. We, my father even stored gas on our farm. Um, in that our house was not on the farm um, because of the rationing I mean, and, and the shortages. But they knew, they trusted the system that the foundation of the community was together and they could work through this. The innovators were being taken out because people like my father and uncle would not be able to live the American dream today. Um, I was... American dream, let's look at this. There, there's a will, there's a way. The American dream is being taken, has been taken away, or is being taken away. You still can make it in America, but with debt at crushing you in your 20s, it's very hard. I mean, then you don't have an education. You're literate, you're educated, very educated, maybe very intelligent, but you're, you're illiterate when it comes to finance finance and, uh, and this is an example this is in the the parity of our issue in with per, with the fi personal finance can be looked back a century ago or so. and that's when the industrial revolution came along education became the tool to provide skills to the mass populace one size fits all at age level learning which is still today, which was developed in the Industrial Revolution. The weakness, literacy spe specific to revolution. If you could not read, you were good as dead in the water. 
after the Industrial Revolution to be, to be impoverished. And today, if you're not financially literate, if you can't manage your finances, your quality of life, your prosperity, and your freedom are all capped. Think about that. Now, I look back at 40. I was a child who had everything. Um, I didn't know I was going to be sick one day or that I would make mistakes and that would cost me dearly. I mean, I had everything. But coming, and I've rebuilt before. But being sick and having an illness that almost took my life, I thought that, you know what, at 40 years old, I'm a banker and some of the stuff I'm having to deal with is even complex for me and if everybody knows that works with me in banking that I know everything about the bank I know how it works in and out I know every product even since I haven't been a few years I can go in and, and do a lot of things because I knew banking inside and out so um so I, I'm going to another slide here. So because we have these, we're illiterate in personal finance and the parity's not there, people don't see the relation of the, de the damage to the community. If you don't have a financially healthy community, and we don't in a lot of places everywhere, including, including higher income level neighborhoods, you may be making a lot of money, but you're not financially literate. It's damaging to you, to you in your lifestyle, in your life. Personal finance issues of the day, real estate foreclosures, identity theft, credit reporting, errors, medical collections, debt, debt collectors, fraud, and unemployment. We'll cover that a little bit in the next series of these videos. My wish in, the, in this book, this is a little bit less savvy as I want would like that I have in the formal presentation I will do on the 27th. It's hard to teach old dog new tricks, but let me tell you, puppies are molds of clay, ready to learn and play. With my experience, including my banking, my really realities from life, of being on top to bottom, and my success, and my life with the depression era grandparents, today's reality. I want parents to become super parents, not by giving their 10-year-old and under money because they feel guilty and they're competing with the Jones next door. Because you know what? That's not going to pay. For, that's not going to help your kid at 18. It, you're building, they're building, you're making them dependent on you. They need to become independent. Make them wealthy with money or financial knowledge or both at, by 18. Actually, it should be made them wealthy with first financial knowledge and a bonus of uh, monetary savings at 18. You teach them as a parent to be financial managers. Well, if you're part of Generation X, you're parents right now. You're like, what? Well, I, I, I never learned. You may be financially savvy in your investments, or, but you don't know how to take, teach your kids. Old men can make war. But it's children who will make history. Our children of tomorrow. If you do not empower your children to become financially engaged, here is the whole deal. Our last generation left us with a great nation. My grandparents died when we were in prosperity. If you leave, if you do not teach, make a change, and empower your children to become financially engaged, I mean... You, in creating value and starting as early as possible and working with your child and this, and this super parenting the super parenting book gives you those guides and those formats to work with children of every certain age and um, age group even before they're born to plan with the, to plan for this because if you don't our debts are going to be our children's yoke the government, private, they're going to have to deal with those issues. 
so if a child is like I said my my fa my father and my uncle were able to deal with the seventies because they had trust in our system. Our kids, the, we were left to give prosperity, and we we squandered it. So we should leave our kids the tools to fix our squander. Because you get if you give your kids the if you make them empowered, it promotes different ideas, innovation. People can work together to fix the problems. There will be economic decline, but you will still have children, people, children, now then adults in the future, that will be successful and have a chance to succeed because they're knowledgeable. Value creation comes from the person inside. Value right now, we are paying our kids to act a certain way, and it's teaching them to act and not actions. You know, what money can't buy, the more limits and markets. Why should kids that can, are able to make donations to the colleges they want to get into, their parents, why should they study? Why, why? They can act. They don't have to be an action of actual work. So, that's from USA Today. And this is showing that poor people, you know, everything's commercialized. You know, homes are become billboards, but we're poor people impacted disproportionately by the commercialization of personal space. The wealthy hold better hands now than they would otherwise. Why bother encouraging your kid to study hard? If you can simply grease the his path, New Harvard or Yale with the promise of a massive donation. This is going to be the last slide for today. F financial literacy for kids. Kids these, this day from USA Today do not know about money. And I'm not talking about I mean, when we were talking about financial literacy, people think of debt, of using your debit card, balancing your checkbook, all that stuff. When I talk about financial literacy, I had to do science projects. I, I remember even in physics, having to put an egg and using straws to cushion and make a... a Something it make it where it drop. We dropped it from the top of, a, of our the roof of our school in high school, and it had to be built. Or straws had to be built around that the egg. It not and it, the goal was not to break that egg. I was sick as a dog physically over this. My biggest fear. I, I mean, I'm not. I hate doing. I'm not great with my hands. And because of that, I played sick that day. And I, I turned in my Roger on time, and I won second place. And you know what? It, it, it emboldened me. It emboldened me to not be scared of science as I was. We should have small business fairs in every school, like science projects. It, we teach the children how to start a business, how to proceed starting a gut, financing, and everything about it. And you embolden your kids not to be fearful in personal finance in doing projects like that. You also could do um, projects with how, you know, how you save for college. Um, contest you teach them about you, you don't just teach about a checkbook you teach about there's three life events you must say it for college first home purchase retirement also another thing if you want to be an innovator you need to know how a business operates even in high school if you don't know the absolute utter details but you understand what is needed. And you understand that if you don't have some of the 
items that are needed if you have a great business plan, where can you go to get your business started? So, our, what our, what your failing schools have taught you, they have not taught you personal finance. And you, and so, they teach sex education. You can you know how to put on a condom at eighteen. And don't mean in that. Do not I do not mean to offend anyone. If you're a parent today and you have a kid under 18 and you are spoiling them left and right, and I'm, I'm a product of being a spoiled child, and if you're spoiling them and you're competing with other parents, you're not a super parent. If your kid has not one dime saved or very little, or, and they're ignorant about personal finance, and yes, ignorant, you have sent your kid off as an adult ill-prepared in our society, facing a very uncertain future. And, and this book helps you change that. The greatest gift of a generation, if you love your kids good enough, or if you want a family, you must love your family or that future child enough to know that bringing them the quality of life is to start saving for them first, early. You're a future parent, you start saving now. You're going to have a kid in two years. If you're a future parent, if you're planning on getting married, you start saving for your kid till two, as aggressive as you can. And I know some people can't at that time because their incomes are lower than when their careers are further down the road. But one way or the other, it has to be made up. If you're not able to save for your kid at all, then you have to teach your kid to go earn money. I had to work in, we had to work in the, I mean, I, I grew up as the first secure generation, went to private school, did not have to work on the farm, but I did, and I made money at it. I didn't save any of it, but I made money, and I thought about, my mom made a, a great al- analogy, if you had just saved 25 cents on the, the dollar, in a separate savings account that when you were sick or something happened to you, you'd still be a rich man. And you, we have passed the point of being sick and now we're looking at the point of starting to, we're starting a business. And it's taken a long ways to get here. But I want people to become super parents. I want them. To, I want them to go to retirement and have a kid at thirty or forty when they go to retirement. That is okay. And and you know, we live, we we do that by our, our schools are not teaching personal finance, and we must. The last thing I will say today on this subject is that somebody I know who believed in doing stuff like this bragged to me one day that his two or three or young child was able to text. Well, what's that text going to do when they turn 18? We technologically integrate everybody. We teach people sex education, but we don't teach people how to earn money and save it. We give them a, a, we give them starvation debt. At eighteen, debt for a degree. Why go to college? Why would I go to college today, being just smothered by de- that kind of debt? I wouldn't. And in this slide presentation today, we will send out an email and put a post on mydonnywise.com, donnywiselive.com, and financedynamic.com. Look for under your main menu tab for Super Parenting Million Dollar Children by 18, and we will have the announcement of what our first recorded video session is going to be formal and the details of it by Sunday, the 20th. One thing else I do want to cover is that if you are a parent that's concerned and wants to get involved or wants to put feedback in, 
I have friends who do who give me feedback all the time when I post something. We we want to choose some families, and we're, which nonprofit we decide to work with, and we're going to have a nonprofit in our own company that's going to be based out of California. That we'll get resources and to t- to to ensure some of our methods. Can easily be implemented, or you know, show how it's implemented. So, for the later versions of the book, so if you participate, it's not because we're going to. If you were to help write, you get paid money. You help participate as a parent. We want you to be your your role with us will determine what benefits you get. So, think about that. We're looking for any and everybody, and you can contact me, Donnie Wise, 919-208-5605. Email is donniewise at empowertheconsumer.com. And if you need that email address, go to the contact form under all the websites this is posted under, then you'll be able to get in touch with me. Thank you for your time today. And we will, I will have another of these video sessions out on Friday. And we will make the announcement Sunday for our first Google Hangout, YouTube broadcast, and Ustream. We'll also record it. It's going to be promoted. And uh, we'll announce the date of when we start be able to release the first volume of Super Parenting Million Dollar Children by 18. Today is Wednesday. I wish everybody a good evening. Thank you.